Adventure is in my blood. Finding treasures big or small and having fun is what it's all about. With my wife, Melissa, and our three kids, life is pretty full. But there isn't a mountain we can't climb together. This isn't your ordinary antique store. My name is Alex Archibald, and this is Curiosity Inc. Good morning, everyone. Today is kind of a different adventure. We are going back to the house. And I'm really hoping to get a lot of work done over this weekend and try and get it more finished and more like a home. Um, Melissa and I have had a lot of fun working on the property, but it's gonna be time for us to let the home go pretty soon here. I've got my brother-in-law, Patrick, coming with me again today, who I'm just waiting for right now. Um, but it's gonna be kind of a sad visit this time too, because I know um, I can't go out and visit Mary. Um, sadly, she passed away last week. Um, she left a, <laughs> Mary, you know, she's a lovely lady and a great sense of humor, but she left a request that I am going to honor for her funeral. And that's for, um, her last ride to be in my Ghostbusters ambulance. Um, so all the times people said, oh, that thing looks like a hearse. And I say, no, it was an ambulance. Well, this weekend we might be using it as a hearse because she's asked that she be taken from the funeral home to the cemetery in the old ambulance. She loved this car and I did too. And I love that she was quirky. So I see Patrick is just about to get in the back there. Hopefully we can find room and then we'll hit the highway and get on the way to the house. But much different adventure this go around. Um, but we're still gonna try and have fun and honor her spirit. guys are taking up the whole highway. That giant tank, I don't know if he was trying to pass or what was going on. But I'm glad I'm not involved in any of that. This ambulance has probably never been more packed with hutches and drawers and dressers and carpeting and tiles. I've got to pull all the tiles out. We're going to try and do the upstairs washroom today. Um, I've got everything I need, the little spacers, all kinds of stuff. So. Gotta start hauling these up and uh, get ready to do the floor. Over here, I think where it stayed in the shade, the glue is holding better. Well, I'll have the sander for in here pretty soon. Yeah, when it was in the sun, it dried out and it just comes right off. Well, it's gonna be nice to get back down to the wooden floor. Yeah. Well, thank you for doing that. I always seem to give Patrick the worst job in the house. First, he's doing all the wood stripping and now he's back there scraping the floor. I, on the other hand, I'm gonna get started on the tile in the upstairs washroom. Now I've chosen sort of a Parisian print um, and I'll show you the sub floor that Josh and Dakota put in last week. So the original wooden floor that was in here was just way too rough. So we've laid in a sub floor. They've uh, put a little bit of filler to level it off so the tiles won't uh, sit funny or crack. I'm going to start probably in the back corner by where the tub is going to go and work my way through. I'm planning on doing a pedestal sink, um, toilet, obviously where a toilet would go, and the clawfoot tub going back in. Uh, it's sort of a black and white design. If I have enough tile, I might come up the wall a bit and do sort of a backsplash. It'd be nice to go up kind of as far as they had it before, but we'll see how much tile I have and whether that's going to be a possibility or not. But for now, um, there's the tile, there's the... Uh, uh, the grout and the mix. So I'm going to go grab my trowel and start laying this in. So there's one problem. I don't know where it went. I brought a tile cutter last time I was out here and I can't find it. So I went to the, one of the local hardware stores. They didn't have a tile saw or a tile cutter, um, but they did have a random 1980s GoBots uh, collector's case that's been sitting on their shelf probably, I don't know, since the 1980s. So ni for 95 cents, why the heck not? Um, but I'm going to see if maybe I can rent or borrow or uh, beg to use somebody's uh, wet saw, perhaps, if they don't have the type I need. Uh, can't give up. I'm out here for a reason. So none of the stores in town here have tile saws or tile cutters. However, Rod, who works at the local home hardware, is going to lend me his own personal tile cutter, uh, which is a wet saw. And he's uh, going on his lunch break and bringing it by the house. What a nice guy. I thought he was saying that they had one for rent at the store, but uh, no, he's lending me his own personal one. So it's a nice thing about a smaller town or just friendly folks in general. When you're stuck, they often are here to lend a hand. And there it is. The wet saw that's been lent to me by a nice local. I'm gonna be putting that to good use right away here. So this is more or less the pattern that I'm going after. Um, it's, it repeats over and over. So every shape, every tile is the same. Just have to make sure you have them in the right spot. So I'm kind of getting an idea how it lays out. I'm gonna start in the corner, work my way around, out to the door and do under the tub area. So first I have to start laying the mortar down. 
to apply the tiles. So I had to go turn the furnace down. It's too hot in the house. Who knew that a few weeks later and I'd be in a position where it'd be too warm in here. So I bought the pre-mix mortar and uh, somebody might say there's more than one way to skin a cat with this, which is kind of an odd saying because there's probably only one way to skin a cat, but I'm going to uh, start getting it troweled out and grooved so I can start putting some tiles in. I'm going to start with the back and work my way forward. And uh, with any luck, next time I turn this camera on, I'll have yeah, maybe half of this done or close to it. So the first tile in place, I'm going to start getting my spacers in pretty soon here, get them ready as I lay the second one, which I kind of have laid out here. So you kind of get it laid more or less where you want it, drop it in. I'm going to get my spacers so that they're the exact right width for the grout. You kind of do that all the way along. With the bulk of the tiles in place, I now have to start cutting the edges, but I hear something in the background. I have been busy tiling and I'm going to paint the walls or tile them, maybe white the lower half. I did do the area where the bathtub is going to be in the same sort of tile, but I have to run out and get a little piece of trim tile that goes along the top. I'll go ahead and do that tomorrow. But it is certainly looking a lot more <laughs> exotic and interesting in here. Um, you know, it's looking pretty good. It is late though. I have to go and empty the car wash up a little bit because I'm dirty from all this. Uh, tomorrow I'll be able to do the uh, the grout in between, but for tonight at least I have one room more or less done. I might uh, after dinner today get to work on the kitchen and try and get that laid in, but a lot of work so far today and Patrick's got the floor just about done in the other room. He's run off, but we're just about back down to wood through the whole floor here. Which I think he's just about got it, really. We just have to clean up in here, and then I can probably sand, maybe even tomorrow. This is really the last, one of the last rooms that needs to be done, this upstairs bedroom and that bathroom. And it won't be long until we're finished up. So you're saying you were not a Talking Heads fan? No. So my sister-in-law, I guess my ex-sister-in-law, <laughs> Nikki, hates the Talking Heads. I like them. Not everybody's up for that kind of music. But I will sing Psycho Killer every once in a while just to get her go. And I'll sing it like him too. Mm, Psycho Killer. Run, 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 run away. Like that. <laughs> you know what she does? She gives me the evil eye. She gives me the stink eye. <laughs> so should I sing that all night long? No. Ever, Patrick, ever. he is fixing floors. He fixes floors. I'm not a talking Let heads fan either. <laughs> <laughs> See what I have to put up with? <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> I had to use a couple chairs to weigh down the carpet because it was still curled there. So hopefully by tomorrow it'll be a little bit even. Um, I remembered one thing though. I've got one problem. 
as the house gets a little bit cleaner and we're staying here tonight, I forgot I had to clean the washroom, which the guys were using for construction and stuff. So I have to clean this all up because it's really gross right now. And I don't think I want to have a bath in here if it's looking like that. Yuck. And I'm going to be cleaning this nasty sink with Zep Cleaner. It's for shower, tub, and tile. Not a sponsored ad here, but look sponsors at what you're missing. Just look at this disgusting sink. I've seen cleaner prison toilets. But wait, we're gonna try Zep and see just how this stuff works. Bum, 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 bum. Apply liberally. And let's see how this stuff works. Grab my sponge, which was complimentary with the house. And look, magically, the dirt just comes right off. So I'm gonna give this a good clean and then wash it all down. Much better. I don't know exactly how it got so bad, but I'll blame Josh and Dakota because they're not here and they're the closest thing to teenagers that I've had working in the house. And for those of you asking, I am planning on changing out this faucet. This is the one that was stuck on the sink before. It is kind of gross, 1970s-ish, and it kind of drips a little bit. Honestly, I've just been happy to have a working sink, and so I'm not messing with it until I absolutely have to. Downstairs now, kind of having a look at the tiles for the backsplash, I've decided to go with the subway tile. And I've cut them down a little bit, as you can see on the bottom, they flattened off so these would fit. So I've got to get that something like that and then cut out the other little octagon pieces that need to go in. Uh, I had to shorten it by one length, so I do have some extra ones left over. Um, I'm going to start putting them on and then I'll, I'll cut out the shapes I need to put them in after. It's been a hard day, a long day. Got a lot accomplished. The majority of the tiles in the upstairs washroom are done. Patrick got a lot of the uh, floor removed in the upstairs bedroom. And I am about to settle in for the night for the first time at the house. Now I've got everything I need. I've got water, I've got my cord for my phone, but we're gonna call it a night and yeah, hopefully all goes well. First day in the house. So the grouting this morning is going generally good. I've gone through most of the tiles and sealed it. Um, there's one problem though. I ran, there it is. I ran out of grout. Ran out of grout, said the little mouth. It's like the worst Dr. Zeus rhyme ever. Which makes me wonder if the publishers ever questioned him. You know, like when he was randomly making stuff up and they'd say like, could you not think of an actual rhyme? And he'd be like, no, the who's in Whoville. And, you know, starts making up random words, the Gryclopoclus. <laughs> and they were like, okay, let's see if that's a thing. Well, the uh, little mouse say the grout is out and I have to go to the store and buy some more. And that's where I'm off to. Um, but I, this morning I also have a few students coming by uh, who are going to help me empty the basement. Uh, I'm gonna get them started so I can just head on the road and go pick up some stuff. But it is starting to look pretty good. You know, in general, I still have to do the back walls. I'm gonna do these, I didn't want it to be overwhelming. That's where the tub's gonna be over there. Um, so I thought that'd be kind of like a little decorative backsplash for the tub. The other part of the wall, I'll probably do in some sort of tile or other finish. But, you know, progress is progress. And in the basement, it's looking much cleaner. If you remember down here, this was all electrical panels, multiples. Like they kept adding things. Well, they put it into one modern, breaker box. Doesn't that look nice? They've labeled as much as they could, I think. So everything is now grounded. Uh, we've added some grounded lines in through the plug so we won't have any issue. And there's all my old stuff. It looks like they kept it around in case I, I don't know, wanted to look at it. Um, but that'll go. The next town over had a hardware store and they did have grout. However, it's not the same brand that I was using before so I really hope the color matches uh, you know try our very best and hope that it matches um, I did find a vanity here um, I've been buying the display models so you know there's missing places all around here for me buying stuff so there used to be a vanity right there now it's in the back of my car um, it'll do the trick you know when you get to a, a town like this sometimes you don't have too many options but I think I found one that'll look good and work in the upstairs washroom I picked up some light bulbs while I was out because the basement is very much like a haunted house still as it's flickering. 
I'm gonna go put these bulbs in because I've got some young guys helping me out this morning and uh, I don't wanna make it too creepy for them. With everything looking much better in the basement and the lights not flickering anymore, I've decided to move upstairs and start assembling the bar stools, which we've gone with sort of an ice cream counter kind of style bar stool, and I think it's gonna look fantastic. So one dilemma that we had was that with our lean bar, it's uh, a little bit higher than your average stool. Now, I had a company uh, called Taken or Taken Bar Stools, and uh, they reached out and had the perfect solution for me. Let me show you. Now, I haven't bolted these in place yet, but they had them at the exact right height for me. Solid cast steel base, just like an old ice cream counter would have been with a really nice wood finish for the top that rotates. And the best thing about it is that it's made in the USA. So if you are in Canada or the US, they do ship. They ship these to me and they arrive safe and sound. I just have to space them out and get them bolted to the floor, but they're gonna look fantastic against that old looking bar that we built here. Now that the floor is all dry in this room, I'm able to get some curtains hung, block out the sliding door, and start moving some nicer furniture back in. <laughs> Mary did have a wish that she would have her last ride in my old ambulance and that is what we're going to do. I'm honoring that wish and so today I'm at the funeral home where we're going to be doing the funeral procession very shortly. Uh, so we're going to be going out uh, with permission from the RCMP with lights and sirens down Main Street here on the way to the funeral home. Mary's going out loud and uh, you know I think uh, it's a fun way to go if you have to do it. But I'm going to be going around front to, uh, to help load Mary and uh, to head off to the cemetery. Back at the house, it was a lovely and quiet ceremony with family and uh, I'm kind of cleaning and getting ready for the family to come visit. And as I'm going through and cleaning up, what do I find? More pottery. And this one's a big one. It's almost two feet across. That's the biggest pot that I found. I can't believe I didn't find it until just now. Now that the snow is gone, I can kind of see there's a bunch of stuff hidden back here in the trees, which you guys can't see. But right in front of me, that's a kiln. That's a, that's a kiln out of bricks that she's made. And it looks like there's a really big uh, kiln or um, stone structure back in there. You can kind of make it out a little bit right there. So there's a couple kilns that were here. I see some wagon wheels. You can always use wagon wheels. Boy, it's so, it's so full of sticks and trees and stuff over here, you can't really see what I'm talking about. But look, wagon wheels right there. And then this is the inside 
of the shed. Now, at some point, I'm gonna have to go through this. There's my old gate in the front. Little heater for in here, hanging from the ceiling. It looks like one point they had, uh, they had power, there's a light bulb up on the roof. Wouldn't trust trying to plug anything in here. You can see the roof's totally gone. This building's gonna have to come down. But I do want to explore in here at some point too and see what there is. It looks like a lot of uh, pottery supplies and clay and other sorts of things. Oh, I have to stay focused. Patrick said he'd keep me focused. Because I get sidetracked. I forget what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be doing a grout in the upstairs washroom. And I'll save some of that exploration for tomorrow before the sun goes down tonight. Hmm. Hey, Patrick. Is this your body wash sponge thing that you brought? It is. <laughs> I'm, I'm handling it. I like to exfoliate. You like to? <laughs> <laughs> uh. You learn something about people every day. Last day at the house today. Patrick and I, well, I slept better than he did. Look at him, he's tired. <laughs> I slept like a baby. I actually slept in today. I'm a little, I'm about an hour behind where I normally am. But Austin is coming this morning to put a new washroom door on because the one that's there right now is horrible. Um, well, I mean, not just because it doesn't look great, but because it doesn't work very well. Our life has pretty much been struggling with this door. Um, it needs to be planed really bad. That's about as far as it gets. And if you want to actually close it, you have to kind of kick it closed. So I thought, well, instead of spending the time putting this one down, which I don't like anyway, because it's a flat piece of wood, um, he's making another pocket panel door that will hopefully work. Um, and he's gonna put a new back door in the house, which is just right this way here, right over there. He's putting a new back door and he's gonna trim it. Um, later today, Patrick's gonna be working in this room, getting the area where the washer and dryer are gonna go sanded and painted so that it'll look nice and finished. And I have to get the tiling done in the kitchen I got the upstairs washroom all done uh, yesterday and it's dried and looking pretty good. Um, tomorrow the guys come, well, we'll be here tomorrow, but they're going to come anyway and put the tub, the sink and the toilet back in. So when I come next week, I will have a fully functioning upstairs washroom as well. And I'm really excited about that. But it's off for breakfast now. Um, and Patrick, before we go today, I want to have a look through the um, shed outside, see if there's any treasures out there too. So we'll do a little exploration today. First things first, I've got to clear some garbage out of here and that the door's out of the way. Then we go have a look. I'm gonna come back to the shed in a second. I heard a familiar voice. Was that Austin I think I heard? Hey, there he is. Hi. It's Austin, he's back. The awesome Austin coming to help fix our doors. I was just complaining minutes ago about how bad this washroom door was. Oh. We've been struggling with it. Cause... Oh yeah, it's a bit tight there. Yeah, that door is not my jam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then we'll Wait. Well, I will leave you to it. Hey, last time you were here, everybody loved your piano playing. Oh, yeah. Surprised me. I was not expecting that. <laughs> so, do you play like semi professionally or did you take lessons? No, I didn't take any lessons. Did I you just learn that good. one song really well or do you know other songs too? I know a few other ones. Okay. But I don't play professionally. You just can rock ones. out really hard to that song on command. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Well, I look forward to coming and see how the doors come along. 
Oh, yeah, I'll get to it here. Hey, while Austin works on the doors inside, I'm gonna come back out here and see what's going on. Um, lots of, it's kind of like a, like a zombie apocalypse. It's like The Walking Dead if you walked into a laboratory that had been shut down for years. There's all kinds of jars. This would be stuff that she would have used for making her pottery. There's an old cream separator there, McCormick Daring. It's kind of a good piece considering I think I have the top for it out there. I do like the gate. There's some, this looks like stoneware, possibly. Stoneware, campfire kind of teapot or coffee pot. Still has a bottom in it. Don't know if I'd trust drinking coffee out of that right now. So I just really have to start checking stuff out, which is what I'm going to do. I got to clear some of this mess out of the way here and start seeing what's at the bottom. So you never know what sort of things might be hiding in here. We'll keep looking in a little bit. There's probably not going to be too much for home run antiques in this room. It's uh, been wet, things are rusted. And sometimes I ask myself, what have I done? But, um, you know, the gate is cool. There's a cream separator. There's some stoneware pots in here or some uh, porcelain pottery. And, you know, I'm sure I'll find a few things, but I'm not uh, holding my breath for anything really good. We'll just try and make it so it's somewhat safe before we can uh, knock this place down. There are some old telephone insulators in here. Now, certain ones are more valuable than others. I think the green kind of ones are a little bit better. There's one there. But I am not a expert on telephone insulators. There's probably, there's actually books on these things. I have a whole bunch in the house too, but there are collectors for them. You know, the black cat tin's not too bad. It's not a really early one. Um, I can see some old tobacco tins in here. Maybe they'll find some oil cans or something, you never know. This is probably where they would have parked the car. So there might be some cans hidden in here. I think exploration for another day. All you need is one treasure to come out of a room like this to make it worthwhile. More and more milk cartons. See, if those are uncracked, the old crock pots can be worth some good money, especially if I can find the lids for them. Those can be over $100 each. To the right person. I I can't get this out of the way. Now, I did find a lot of her pottery inside. You can hear the crumbling underneath my feet. These are just empty. Kind of disappointing. I'm sure there's going to be all kinds of stuff buried in here. Um, but I'm going to go inside and work on time in the kitchen. Just be better use of my time right now. Well, although I like the look of the Octagon subway tile, it is literally the worst tile I've ever worked with in my life. Now, I've done tiling a few times, um, so I'm not a professional, I don't do this for a living, but I will say the couple th a couple things about it. Normally, I'm kind of glowing about the products that I use. In this case, um, it could be because I don't have the right tools. I did try a wet saw, the tile pieces were too small. Um, and the challenge with an octagon shape is that uh, when you need to cut it on the correct edge, um, sometimes it doesn't sit flat against uh, where you need it to in the saw, so you'd almost have to build a special jig or something for it. Um, very frustrating. And then when you try and use a regular tile cutter, what you end up with is uh, the pieces are so small that they sometimes shatter and snap in the wrong places. I am kind of just roughing it in right now. Um, I'm gonna have to come back with, uh, try and figure out, I'll watch a YouTube video, on what the proper um, tools are that you use to cut tiny little tiles like this. Um, even nippers are taking off the wrong size, so it's just frustrating. Uh, literally the worst, possibly designed by Satan himself. Uh, I'm going to basically just do this backsplash in the octagon, and then for the tile work that I'm planning on doing around the stove, I'm gonna get good old fashioned square tiles or rectangular tiles for there or something, not rectangular, probably a square, 
I am not using Octagon anywhere else because I hate it. <laughs> it's awful. Uh, not recommended for a, a junior Tyler like myself. Um, I will find a way to finish off this backsplash behind me here. And it is looking kind of cool, but I'm certainly not going to do the rest of the wall in it because I will be here the rest of my life. On that note, though, let's go see how Austin Doors come along. Check on someone who actually has the right tools. It looks like we've had, um, you know, either a little family of beavers has moved in here and starting to build a beaver dam with little wood shavings everywhere, or Austin has made a functioning door. I can't tell you how nice that'll be to have a washroom door that closes properly. And yeah, looks really good. I, I like it. it, makes the door look really long and narrow, like something out of a Tim Burton movie. And now he's working on the back door. So that's the design we went for the back door. Very simple, we're moving the storm door, or he, when I say we, I mean he's doing everything and I'm just watching. Um, yeah, and you're gonna frame it out too, right? Around yeah, the door? I'll put, I brought all the material for casing so I can do that. I made the head casing look as close as I could to oh, perfect. that one over there, so I can make that up. Awesome, well I'm gonna go throw this other door out and leave you to it. Okay. So yesterday we put in the ice cube tray in the freezer, Patrick did, and he wanted to show me the horrible thing from his youth. So what is it about ice cube trays like this you don't it like? It used to make like a horrible sound. And I hate it too, and if you had it wet hands and you took it out of the freezer, they would stick. Like, you know, when you stick your tongue to a pole. No, like you've done that? No, I have never done that. I've convinced other people. Like on a Christmas story? Yeah. Hmm. But it kind of... Oh, it didn't do it this time, but... No, it used to make this like horrible screeching noise. And anyone that's had them is probably... I can imagine it. it, like nails on a chalkboard. Almost, yeah, right? it's just so. This is what you're thing. trying to show me: nails on a chalkboard. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, it, it did work though. Yeah, works good. Made, I love these things. One thing I never mentioned about this area where the fridge is is that we built it um, so that a modern, large, like even a double door fridge could fit there. Um, it's just basically propped up on a platform for show, so it fills that space better. But presumably, at some point, somebody will put a modern fridge in and it is ready to go for that. What did we accomplish this weekend? For starters, the front yard, well, I hired some neighborhood children to rake it, and you wouldn't know because the yard still has a long way to go, but they pulled probably 12 bags of leaves off of the front yard, and we're starting to actually see grass in some places. It was just overgrown and had a lot of pine cones and needles all over it. So the front yard is starting to feel a lot better, and I'm hoping that next week I can convince maybe my family to come out with my kids, my own children, not the neighborhood children, can help me rake the leaves and get the yard looking great too. Started to clear the front porch, where it's a little bit more walkable now. Patrick did a good job out here. Still have to get rid of a lot more things, but it is looking good. And there's very few places with clutter in the house now, which is nice. The front entrance way, well, we've got our little seating area we did last time, but we now have a full dining room table. I've kind of pulled the corner up here so people don't walk on it. Not on my nice white clean rug, Got some curtains in place. We got the first layer of floor varnish going on. That has to dry. And I did get some tile work done in the kitchen, which, you know, it is looking okay. I have to come back and finish it with the right tools. No matter how good it looks though, I'm not still not happy with that product. So I'm gonna take the uh, remainder of the tiles I bought back and buy some regular just white tiles for back there for the backsplash. The washroom is clean and in service, so no more grungy construction washroom. That's in pretty good shape. Oh, I left my shampoo there. Gotta grab that after. And this is kind of getting down to be one of the last messy rooms. It's the first room I kind of started to renovate. 
But um, our good friend Austin got the back door and we've got to come back for some weather strip. You can see there's a gap up at the top. So we have to do a little adjusting and, and finishing, but all in all, it's a nice looking door and it works with the skeleton key and that is functioning. Let's make sure it's locked, which it's not. There we go. Working door. Patrick got the area where the washer and dryer are going to go all painted and, and done on either side. So just about ready for machines to go in here. Still have to paint this little box. I'm going to do that white. That can be another day. It'll have to be another day because we have to head home. Front room, a little bit of clutter to clear out, but it's looking more cozy and more homey up in the front with some curtains in place and we got the old stereo to work. We just moved it to the other side of the room and it gets a good reception now. It's the one from, I think, episode two or three. I tried making it go and it wouldn't go, but we did save it and it's ready. I like this room, it's probably one of the nicer rooms because the hardwood floors in this room were in really decent shape. So we're able to save those. Um, we'll go upstairs and have a look up there. By the way, the floor actually, um, it darkened after I stained it, which is what I thought it would. And after the gloss dried, it came out to look just like a dark hardwood floor. So it's really not that bad, folks, for those of you that were watching at home. The wood floor actually doesn't look too bad with that stain on it. So let's go upstairs, shall we? I'm going to turn my light on. And that's my little hotel room light that I put up there. And the upstairs. Well, a lot of this mess will be cleaned up next week as the plumbers come and install the toilet. They're gonna take the tub and put it back in place. I did get my tile all done and complete. Um, our good friend Carmen, who's local here, is gonna come and paint out this room for me. And um, the plumbers are gonna install the new little sink here. And then Clawfoot's gonna go in this area there. So, um, because this is such a bold pattern, I'm doing, gonna keep the walls very much similar to what I've done out here, kind of that gray color. And this was the really, really messy room that had the lino on it originally. Patrick started sanding it today, um, but it is quitting time. I blew the whistle like on the Flintstones. Woo! Except I didn't pull on an animal's tail or anything. Um, and we were gonna have to go, but he did get the majority of this smoothed down. Now, if Josh was here, he'd say, oh man, that's so sick, that's dope. I like the way this looks with all the paint on it. He'd say something like that because he's a young person. But I don't know if we're gonna leave it. It does have kind of a nice patina the way it is. It will be a tremendous amount of work to try and get it all the way back to just raw wood in here, but we're gonna see how far we can take it. Already you can see there he's done versus there he didn't do. Big difference, but this room is starting to shape up and really starting to feel nice and cozy. So once this room is done, then the entire upstairs will basically be done um, with the exception of the one room that still has some storage in it. So surprisingly, there's still stuff in this house that is not mine, things that I didn't put in here. Um, so <laughs> we have to wait until um, the rooms are cleared out and then we can start dispersing things like I did downstairs. And I did spend the night in this room here, and I have to say I woke up terrified at least two or three times as I saw what was a figure leaning over my bed with what looks like a pistol, uh, but in fact it's a pickle jar. So <laughs> my own fault, like I scared myself. Um, so what happens when you wake up at two in the morning and you blink and the first thing you see is somebody standing over you like this. <laughs> uh, so Pickle Man got me, Pickle Rick got me a couple times there, but I'm gonna leave him in the window just for fun. But the most important thing we accomplished this weekend was giving Mary her final ride to the cemetery in the ambulance. She always told me that she wanted to go for a ride in the car, and this was supposed to be the weekend that she did. So when I went past the house, I gave a little sound of the siren, and I said to her, there you are, Mary, that one's for you. So thanks again for tuning in on another adventure. We are going to come back again after this weekend and try and get a little bit more work done, hopefully with Josh and Dakota. We have an auction that we're organizing. Hopefully uh, by this week, Castor Auctions um, has it up at kauctions.ca. We'll be listing a lot of the wonderful art and some of Mary's work that we found in her home up for auction and giving half back to her estate. And it'll get divided however her will stipulates. 
but um, trying to do something nice for the family. And if you wanted to own a piece of Mary's wonderful artwork, this would be an opportunity for you to do that. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, I'll try and include some links in the description below. Um, another adventure, another day done, and off on the highway. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Check us out online at curiosityedmonton.ca, on Facebook under Curiosity Incorporated, and on Instagram at Curiosity Inc. YG. We'll see you guys soon, and bye for now.